Now at five, COVID vaccine gridlock. I'm sure there were a lot of angry people and because a lot of people were getting out of their cars. We were waiting that long. People were getting out of their cars, milling around. The frustrations pile on for people waiting to get a shot. We find out what had some waiting in line for hours at a vaccine site in Portland. Plus. Oh, um, I'd be dead right now. We hear from the hiker thankful for the rescue crews that saved their life. Their message to those heroes after a devastating fall off a cliff on the coast. And then more COVID relief is on the way for Americans. The president is set to sign his nearly $2 trillion stimulus plan this week. The next steps before you see a check. This is KGW News at 5. Well, it is a busy time at mass vaccination clinics, including the one at the Portland airport. This drive up site ran into trouble Saturday with long wait times for folks stuck in their cars. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany Folgers. OHSU runs that site and blames a few different things for the backup. Tim Gordon reports it was frustrating for those stuck in line. We first covered this drive up clinic back in late January. Since then, more than 40,000 vaccinations have gone into arms at the PDX Economy parking lot. This weekend, the sun shone through at times Sunday and it seemed pretty smooth before noon. But Saturday was the toughest day so far. Some people tell us they waited a very long time to get through. We knew it would be a little of experience, but it ended up uh, a three hour ordeal, which nobody seemed prepared for. Jeff Hansen helps care for his father, Nils, along with Nils' wife, Marge. Nils has mobility issues, so Jeff drove them to PDX for a 4.30 appointment. They said they joined hundreds of cars waiting. And so uh, lines would move. People that seemed to arrive behind you would go in front of you. And again, the lack of communication, I think, frustrated a lot of people. Are we in the right space? Why are these people going when we're not? OHSU blamed the wait times on unexpected delays during the afternoon shift change and patients arriving early or late for appointments. OHSU issued a statement saying in part, we apologize for any inconvenience and distress the longer wait time may have caused. Adding, no patients were turned away and the registration, vaccination and monitoring teams stayed on site Saturday evening until everyone scheduled and waiting for a vaccine received one. Jeff Hansen appreciates that Marge was able to go ahead and get her vaccination Saturday instead of having to return for a Sunday appointment. The wait, though, was rough. The volunteers were great, but there was no communication of what was going on ahead of you, how long that wait expected to be. So basically, it was just a pile up. A community builds when everyone's waiting in line, so you, you exchange pleasantries with people, and people were very frustrated because it was a lot of seniors and and people with mobility issues at that location. Despite the trouble, OHSU says 5,766 people got vaccinated on Saturday and about 5,600 were expected to get a dose Sunday. When OHSU first opened this site, they talked about the possibility of doing up to 10,000 vaccinations a day. They tell me today that's still possible if they were to reconfigure and open up some more parking lot space. You'd also think they'd need some more staff to do it. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Thank you, Tim. Meanwhile, Washington is set to mark a big milestone in its vaccination effort. The Washington Health Department says it expects to administer the 100,000th vaccine dose next week. The Health Department says since late January, more than 94,000 people have been vaccinated at four state-led mass vaccination sites, including one in Ridgefield. These sites make up about 10% of the total vaccine being given across the state. President Biden is expected to sign his massive COVID rescue bill this week, promising help is on the way for hurting Americans and businesses. The Senate passed the $1.9 trillion package yesterday with no Republican votes. The House is expected to take it up on Tuesday. The bill includes $1,400 stimulus checks, $300 per week in extra jobless benefits, and billions for vaccine distribution. The Biden administration is hoping to make vaccines available to all Americans by May. We have an update tonight on a tragic story out of Gresham. A car hit three people last night, killing a child. Police say a mom was walking with a child and a toddler when they were hit on Northwest Eastman Parkway. It happened near the entrance to Gresham Town Fair Shopping Center. 
Tonight, we've learned the child killed is nine-year-old Bailey Martins Reed. Her two-year-old sister, Maggie Reed Taylor, is in the ICU, and mom, Victoria Martins Reed, is recovering from a broken ankle. Today, we talked to Victoria. She shared these photos of her girls and posted this on Facebook. She wrote, tonight, we lost Bailey Martins Reed. She was my heart and one of the brightest and loving people. She was nine years old. I am broken and don't know what to do. It just breaks your heart for this family. Police do say that the driver stayed on scene and is cooperating with their investigation. There's a GoFundMe set up to help the family pay for funeral costs and medical expenses. We'll have a link for that for you at KGW.com. Tonight, we are hearing directly from the hiker who survived a huge fall onto rocks at the Oregon coast. Galen Etlin shares how a birthday took a bad turn and why the hiker thinks they're still alive. Glammed up and ready to go, Guilt High of Southeast Portland set out to celebrate on the Oregon coast Friday. The day before my birthday. Gil and their partner took photos enjoying Hug Point State Park south of Cannon Beach. They reached an area they hadn't visited before. We thought it would just be like a short trail and they looked like pretty traveled. But a few feet onto a narrow path, Gil slipped, falling from a ledge onto rocks more than 100 feet below. The Coast Guard arrived after several other local crews and got this video as medics worked to stabilize Gil. My right arm is like super broken. It's probably going to need a metal plate in it. Fractures in my face, in my nose, in my ribs. My left elbow is fractured and my hip is fractured. Amazingly, Gil is alive and recovering at Legacy Emanuel. How are you feeling now? Um, so I'm in a lot of pain right now, but I'm feeling like pretty positive about like the amount I'm going to heal, which is like incredible that I fell 100 feet under rocks and like here I am walking away with only needing one surgery. Incredible is truly the word. Take it from the Coast Guard. Pretty extraordinary. I'm not sure how, but uh, I'd say they're pretty, pretty lucky. <laughs> Gil was down there for about an hour before being airlifted away, fighting to stay conscious. What goes through your head in moments like that? I just kept telling them, I like, I'm going to die soon. What do you think got you through this? I don't want to like die when I have like a good life with like my partner in a warm house. It's my birthday. I'm not dying at 25. And after overcoming depression and thoughts of suicide earlier in life. To be able to like be at this place as like an adult and be like, no, I want to live is like, a pretty awesome development for me. Gil feels thankful to the volunteers and crews who provided that second chance. Without them, I'd be dead right now. All of our healthcare workers and like all of our paramedic responders who like came through, they really did save my life. Gil says they probably won't be trying those trails again, hoping others can learn from their experience, but most of all, to appreciate life. You'll never forget 25. Yeah, I have to say, I wasn't sure if my 25th birthday would top my last two parties I had, but this is definitely going to be the hardest one to forget. And see the bright side. Galen Etlin, KGW News. It's been about half a year now since last fall's devastating wildfires in Oregon, and the recovery continues all across our state. FEMA has opened up a temporary housing site in Lincoln City for those who lost homes in the Echo Mountain Fire. The units are fully furnished, and families will be able to stay there for more than a year. The devastation was tremendous. We've got five counties where we're building uh, communities like this and uh, housing uh, about 250 families that um, are very grateful to have this opportunity. So I'm the federal coordinating officer and I have an amazing team that's worked tirelessly long hours, seven days a week to make something like this happen. And I'm, I take great pride in that. FEMA's direct housing mission to establish sites like this is also going on in Lynn, Lane, Marion, and Jackson counties. 